June is showering all sorts of miracles here on Tech Today. Affordable and OLED. Affordable OLED TVs are not something you hear of that often. Well, we have the most affordable OLED television from Xiaomi here on the sets of Tech Today. Also, a machine which can actually take hot, humid air and convert it into clean drinking water. A miracle? Is this a gimmick? Is this a game changer? Well, we're going to find out all that and a lot more. I'm your host, Ayush Alavadi, and you are watching your favorite technology show, Tech Today. As you know, we love to showcase innovation here on Tech Today, and that's why we don't just do unboxings of phones and tablets and stuff like that. We also get EVs. And if we're not doing EVs, now we want to do televisions. Because I think this is a space that's hotting up. There's QLED TVs, there's normal LED TVs. Of course, now there's OLED TVs as well. Now, OLED TVs have their pros and cons, but the biggest con is that they're incredibly expensive. What if I remove that pain point and gave you a TV which looks good, sounds good, and well, it's right behind me, the Xiaomi Vision 55-inch OLED TV. Now, Xiaomi has made a bunch of TVs over the past few years, QLED, LED. They're far more affordable than those from Samsung, Sony, or LG, but this is their foray into the OLED space. This is the Vision OLED by Xiaomi. So there's the LG C1 OLED, which is the undisputed king of OLED TVs when it comes to gaming. A lot of people are purchasing consoles now, so they want a nice TV, which also can prove to be a content consumption device. So you can watch your Netflix, Amazon Prime, Apple TV, and stuff like that as well. Of course, the LG C1 OLED is a very expensive proposition. The 55-inch costs nearly 1,50,000 rupees. So if I told you you could get an OLED TV, 55 inches, and that would cost you less than one lakh, well then welcome to the Xiaomi Vision OLED. Now, I'll tell you a few things about this that work and a bunch of things which don't work. The first thing that really works for it is the display, which is a 55-inch OLED display, which has Dolby Vision, Dolby Atmos. The sound is fantastic. It's an eight-speaker system with Dolby Atmos, and I can tell you something safely. If you're not really into a cinema experience and you just want good sound, I think this TV doesn't really need a sound bar. That's how good the sound is on this TV. Let's talk about design. If you look at this TV, it is wafer thin, like I said earlier, and that's kind of cool because for an OLED screen to have a 4.6 mm panel, it is incredibly slim. It has this metal frame and gives you quite a luxury premium sort of a feeling. And of course, there's a Xiaomi logo at the bottom and it's got metal legs inside the box, which is what we've actually placed this on, this stand, these very skinny legs. It doesn't come with a wall mount. So that's something which you don't get with this TV. You can purchase that separately, of course. Another thing I didn't mention is the Fairfield mic, which is uncannily attentive to everything you say. You want to give a voice command, just say the magic word, which I'm putting down on the screen out there so that the TVs and the other devices in your house don't wake up. You can tell it to play a particular song, change the volume, put on a particular video or a show, all by just talking to the remote. The remote is a standard one, pretty much what you get on any premium TV. And of course, it comes with a Google Assistant, a power key, this nice little trackpad. You can go to the patch wall, which is something we need to talk about in a bit. You have back keys, Netflix, Prime Video, Hotstar, and other apps over here. There's no mute key. For mute, you have to just tap the lower volume key twice and it goes on mute. It's a simple remote and it works fairly well. But now let's talk about why this TV might be better than other TVs in this price range. So first let's talk about another TV which this is pitted straight against. If you haven't really bought into the OLED concept, then Samsung has QLED TVs which do a fairly decent job with the way they process the picture. So essentially a QLED is a very complicated technology in terms of how they have enhanced LED TVs by putting a quantum dot layer in the front of it. So it's pretty much like an LED TV, which has really been souped up by Samsung almost to compete with the OLEDs. Now, the reason OLED TVs are better than QLED TVs is often in dark scenes and when you want it to go pitch black. Imagine a traditional LED screen or a QLED screen, no matter how much local dimming and all the technologies they put in over there, they essentially have light which is cast against the screen. They might have a quantum dot layer, but often it doesn't give you deep blacks. Let's put it that way. It gives you grays and there's always light blooming on the sides. There'll be whitish, well, patches on the side. That happens a lot in the older technology. In OLEDs, 
they don't even need to do that because they have individually lighting pixels. So each of these pixels on the TV can actually go completely black, hence giving you, well, great night scenes as well. Yes, this TV performs fantastically in the day as well. You can see some of our visuals. And even in the day, there's not much reflection on this screen. The panel is top notch. But there is a catch when it comes to OLEDs, at least theoretically, the problem over the years has been something called screen burn-in, which is the pixels which are being used regularly start to burn in and leave an imprint of whatever you've been watching. For instance, you've been watching India Today for too long and you've been watching maybe the Tech Today show. So right at the bottom or at the top, if there's a particular logo which is actually there on our shows, and if you only watch that every day for the next few years, then it will leave some sort of an imprint or what they call a screen burn-in. Well, is there a way to prevent that? Just watch a lot more content on Netflix, on Hotstar, all sorts of things. Watch football matches, watch a lot of tech today as well. And that's the solution. If that's not feasible, then you can always use the pixel refresh feature on this TV. I don't know how that is in the long run. We'll have to see with a lot more testing. But for the next two to three years, you have a TV which is the ultimate OG of the market, competing with the likes of Samsung when it comes to consuming basic content. But of course, there's another catch. Now, if you're comparing this TV to the Samsung QLED, then Samsung has the frame which looks really good, like a photo frame on your wall. It has some really cool features. Most importantly, it has a 120 Hz refresh rate. That is something the Vision OLED lacks. It's actually restricted to 60 Hz. So when you gear it up with your PlayStation or your latest Xbox, you might have a few issues. It's not like the games won't run, but they won't run in their optimum state. Look, on previous episodes of Tech Today, especially our gaming special, we've spoken about how a 120 hertz refresh rate is important now. And more importantly, if you're spending almost 1 lakh rupees, it's important to future-proof yourself because in the future, you're going to get a lot more 120 hertz content, especially when it comes to gaming. So if there's a gamer in the family, well then hold off. Maybe Xiaomi needs to come up with a version 2 or the next rendition of this TV which actually comes with a 120 hertz display. But where this TV scores and it really knocks the ball out of the park is their interpretation of Android TV. The Android OS on this TV obviously comes with a skin which is patch wall which we've seen on a lot of Xiaomi TVs. I was not too sure about using patch wall before I did but using it on this TV I am completely blown away by how easy it makes even something as intuitive as the Android interface. So hats off to them because whilst the LG pointer and the OS on LG works really well and Samsung's interpretations all right, Samsung's full of ads nowadays and all sorts of things. It's very confusing and buggy when it comes to their operating system. LG has, of course, its limitations. When you're on the Google Play Store on a TV and you have all these things working for you, this TV with patch wall, it only makes the user experience even better. So what's our verdict? The TV looks good, it sounds good, and honestly, if you just need an OLED TV under 1 lakh rupees, because this one is priced at 90,000 rupees, you use a bunch of cards and you can get your cashbacks, and you can get this for as low as 83,000 rupees. Yes, it's a lot more affordable than the LG OLED range, which is way over a lakh, any model that you take. But if you are shelling out so much money on an OLED television, then do you want 120 hertz? So the verdict is really divided. So summing it all up, if you're in the market for an OLED TV or just want to be initiated or introduced to this technology and it's a really cool technology, then this, the Xiaomi Vision OLED 55 inch is the cheapest, most affordable OLED TV yet and it's great at what it does. But if you're a gamer, then look at other options. This is the key to getting through an entire Tech Today show. Keep hydrating. This, of course, is an ordinary glass of filtered water at home. But there's a company from Israel which has now set up shop here in India and they are essentially taking hot and humid air and converting that into clean drinking water. Is that a gimmick or is that even possible? We'll have a look. It's very hot nowadays, so it's good to hydrate. But what if I told you the more hot and humid it is, well, maybe this machine will produce more water. In fact, this is one of the first such devices which actually turns air 
humid air especially to water and I think that is some crazy innovation on display this is the water gen Jenny and this is the whole lineup of devices that's recently been launched that's a portable version then of course you have this which produces a little less water this one can produce up to 40 liters of water in optimal conditions and then you have bigger ones and it gets bigger and bigger but let's focus on this and the tech on display what this essentially does is takes humid air from the air around you and you saw of course tech today from the namaste london special and we had the dyson zone which was also innovative it took air around you then purified it via headphones and then gave you clean air to breathe what this does is something similar but a little different from the back there's a filtration system that humid air is collected in that filtration system then that goes inside the machine and i'll tell you what's happening in a nutshell inside it is then going to be filtered then comes to a proprietary heat exchange chamber in simple english well that water is going to condense at the right temperature and then it's going to go to another set of filters what happens there with uv filters and all sorts of things is it gives you bacteria free water and honestly i'm here in delhi and the water is tasting a little sweet and i'm kind of impressed because essentially in mumbai and in delhi the water tastes very different now what's interesting is this might have a better use case in a city like Mumbai which is incredibly humid so the more humid and the right temperature the higher temperature there is well this will produce maybe a little more water as will all of these devices in a city like Delhi maybe not but even then I see well a use case in hospitals maybe in corporate parks in residential complexes this might be well a sustainable way and an eco-friendly way to actually use technology and make a genuine impact in people's lives for now i'm telling you it's really hot so the only solution from the team at tech today is to drink your water hydrate and we'll see you soon see technology can be put to good use mind-boggling tech on tech today would you drink that glass of water is the million dollar question i want to know what you guys think shout out to us on social media especially on instagram i've been getting all sorts of messages ever since i started posting about that device but would you drink that glass of water well let us know for now please do hydrate come back after the commercial break there's a lot more on this show now if you're an audiophile then this is a great time to be alive because we wrap up an episode give you a recommendation and boom next week we have a rival brand with a new set of headphones or earbuds some things happen like that in the truly wireless earbud space in fact realme now has a competitor to all the affordable earbuds in that space shivan has had some time with these new realme earbuds are they a true bang for your buck well let's find out So a nice pair of earbuds is something I think everyone is sort of looking for these days. You don't really want to be holding the phone to your ears all the time. These ones that I have with me right now are the Realme Buds. These are the Q2S versions and they've been recently launched. good looking fairly nice in color the sleek casing is definitely impressive i'm talking about first glance impressions but then there were some things which came to light when i used them further which were not that great either let's talk about these ones right now okay so right up top when you're getting started with these buds they're very very light in weight and this sort of casing easily fits in your pocket. It does come with a type C connectivity and uh, it charges within an hour's time. Now you're getting 40 mAh batteries in each of the buds and a 480 mAh battery in the casing. Now let's get started. Uh, as soon as you pluck these ones out of the case, you just need to put them in the ear and uh, if you have your phone's Bluetooth on, it'll immediately start recognizing this device and uh, you just need to connect. It's not the quickest uh, connectivity I would say uh, whether it's an Android or it's an iPhone it will take a couple of seconds to initially connect with these and after that it is fairly faster most important once you've got them on I found the fitting to be quite good because I've usually had this trouble with most earbuds that they tend to fall out these ones don't have that issue now most important is the audio quality for which you have these buds whether you're listening to pop or you're listening to rock or you're listening to any kind of club music or you're listening to indie music acoustic across different genres 
I did not have really too many complaints as far as the audio quality is concerned. It is really nice and it will cut out a lot of sound from outside as well. Only issue here I found is that at higher volumes, the trebles and mids do tend to slightly get a little jerky. Only somebody who's like a really sound geek will be able to make that out. Otherwise, for most people, this will not really pose to be a problem. So overall, audio quality is decent. But yes, do not use it at 100% because these buds offer a lot of audio volume. So use it at about 70% of volume and you will have a decent experience. At 100%, it could have a bit of an impact on you. Okay, so as far as functionality is concerned, double tap will help you answer a call. Same double tap will help you play or pause any track that you're listening to. If you triple tap on it, it'll make you change the track when you're listening to songs and a long press on either side will help you disconnect a call. Now, there are more features to these buds which you can activate through the Realme Link app. Like there are sound effects which you can toggle between, there are modes, there is a gaming mode and then there are noise cancelling options as well. But here is where I feel the problem starts with these buds because as far as this Realme Link app is concerned, if you're using an Android device, it'll be easy to connect. But if you're on iOS, we tried with several iPhones, they would not help us connect the device to the Realme Link app and that is a problem for me. Second thing which I found goes against these buds is the sensitivity of the tap. It is a little hard. So when you're having to tap three times, it is sort of hitting the ear at the same time. And thirdly, it's the pricing. These ones are priced at rupees 2000. I feel it is slightly on the higher side because you also get the Oppo Enco buds which are about 200 rupees cheaper and they do offer you pretty much everything else. Overall, audio quality is good but pricing is a bit high. These are the Realme Buds q 2 f The most important part of this show is you, the Tech Today community. On the show, we want to build the biggest tech community on the planet of engaged tech enthusiasts and you make our jobs a whole lot easier by writing into us on Instagram and on Twitter. Now, a lot of questions have been coming in over the past few weeks, but the show has been on the road. You've seen what we were doing in England and I hope you enjoyed it. But a lot of you are asking a lot of questions and there's been so many device review requests as well. And there's so many lying on the backside of this set that I can't show you right now. Now, one question that's come in has come from Gaurav and he asks, when will the Galaxy Fold 4 or the new Galaxy Fold be coming up? Should I wait for it or should I purchase the Galaxy Fold 3? Well, this happens to be a very special phone for us on Tech Today because the Galaxy Z Fold 3 was our first episode when the show was launched a few months ago. And we were completely blown away by the innovation by the guys at Samsung. Now, the reason everyone's asking about this is, and it's back in the news, it's essentially because a very reliable leaker has come up with a rumor who got the S22 Ultra right. And he's actually come up with a rumor where he's spoken about the design of the Fold 4. He said that the width of the hinge has really been tweaked and it's been redesigned. It looks a lot sleeker than the Z Fold 3. And of course, that will make the phone look and feel a lot more compact or pocketable. Now, this particular Twitter user posted the specs of the phone as well. And if he's to be believed, then it's not going to look much different from this except for the hinge. Now, what I want to see is when you open up the phone, the Oppo foldable did something which this couldn't, which was almost make this crease invisible. Will it be there? That remains to be seen. But then again, this was waterproof or water resistant. We've done that test on tech today. And it was amazing when you closed it as well. In terms of what he says the specs will be, well, he says that the camera system is going to be a 50 megapixel main camera, a 12 megapixel ultra wide camera, and a 10 megapixel telephoto lens with a 3x zoom. If that sounds familiar, that's because the only complaint of the grouse people had with this phone was that the camera was not top notch. So basically, if you take the best camera out there on the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra and put it on this phone, I can tell you two things. This will be a game-changing device and I think it will be a lot more expensive as well. But let's see. If this phone was to come out, the Z Fold 4, it will come out in August following Samsung's launch timelines in the past and I think it's something worth waiting for. If you go back to the first Tech Today review of this phone, you'll find out that we wanted the battery to be better, we wanted the crease to be almost invisible and I think that will be something they're working on. And of course, we wanted better cameras because that's something everyone wants on their smartphones. If Samsung's actually doing all those three things, this guy 
the Z Fold 4 could potentially, in a couple of months, be the best phone in the market. So I'd rather wait for it than pick up the Z Fold 3 in June right now. The next question is from Avinash and he's asking about the new Apple Watch and its camera features saying, does the Apple Watch come with a camera? I'm guessing you're talking about the rumor that's been doing the rounds, which actually has some basis to it. Let me clarify everything. Now, a few days ago, a patent was published in the US, which was for an Apple Watch or an Apple wearable, which will come with a camera embedded in the rotating dial. Now, it sounds really cool, but it's also a lot confusing because if that were the case and you wear the watch on your left hand, then the dial comes here on the right and you pretty much get a camera view from your wrist. And that's kind of cool that the watch will come with a camera. But Let's see what they do about battery if that's the case because the Apple Watch already isn't the best when it comes to battery life. But then what if you're wearing the watch on your right hand? That might be a big issue because then the camera is facing you and I don't know, maybe that's their way of taking a selfie but I'm sure they'll have a solution when this does come and that brings me to the next question. This most likely won't show up on the Apple Watch Series 8 which we're waiting for on Tech Today in a few months from now. I think when you see these patterns, Essentially, they take a few months to do some research and from our last trip to the Dyson factory, they can take years of prototypes. So maybe in the coming years, you'll see this. For now, the Apple Watch Series 8 is something we're really waiting for. And I think that will come with a lot more health monitoring features like glucose monitoring, for instance. So yes, if you're thinking of buying that Apple Watch for the camera, I don't know. But if you're thinking of purchasing the next Apple Watch, it's worth waiting because there will be a few game-changing features in that device. We absolutely love it when you all write in and stay engaged and you have to continue doing that on our social media handles. Reach out on Instagram, Twitter, wherever you want to, ask your questions and we shall feature them on a show. Drop a comment as well and we might just pick it up. Thanks so much for watching. Until next week, when there's a big surprise for you, adios.